All right, if the two of you wanna go ahead and get started, I think now would be a good time. I see we have a few people in, so. All right, sounds great. So good morning, guys, and uh, thank you for uh, hosting us to the uh, RASM team. Um, my name is uh, Jake Holhouse, and I am with uh, HH Insurance Group. And uh, this is our first virtual uh, flood insurance seminar that we have done. Um, and in partnership with uh, RASM and Synovus Mortgage, we have put together a presentation on some upcoming changes that are affecting uh, Sarasota County and what it looks like from a flood insurance standpoint um, on a go forward basis really over the next year. We expect some pretty drastic changes to the flood insurance maps, which basically determine uh, flood insurance rates for consumers. And, um, and the rates are looking very good, especially the coastal part of Sarasota County where most of the revision has happened. Um, and so today we are basically going to kind of cover the north down to the central part of Sarasota County and talk about what it means from a flood insurance rate standpoint, from a construction code standpoint, and just kind of some general changes on that. Um, and so uh, we'll go ahead and jump in. The first presenter with us today is uh, Laura Dorsey with uh, Synovus Mortgage, and she is going to uh, cover some of what's going on in the mortgage industry as a lot has uh, changed there, specifically for some of these uh, higher value homes and flood zones where you've got the jumbo products and things like that. And so she will uh, start us off and then we'll jump into the uh, flood insurance piece of this. So with that, Laura. Good morning. Thank you everybody for your time today. I'll keep my part brief. Um, it's really more about the flood insurance. I did just want to touch base on a few of the products and things that we offer. Um, we are still closing record amounts of loans, um, even with all the kind of COVID craziness. Um, refinances, of course, being a huge part of that and uh, really significantly a, a good amount of our high net worth clients as well. Seems that being able to borrow money in the twos is attractive and people aren't taking money out of assets. So that leads me to private wealth. That's really the product I'm doing uh, the most of. Um, that allows for 5% down on a primary home with no mortgage insurance. Um, that's a super attractive to those that are earning great uh, returns on the market. So private wealth is an amazing product for us and works well. Um, again, we can go up to 5% down on a property up to a million dollars. So that's considered your jumbo market. When a number of the lenders are increasing rates on jumbo um, for self-employed borrowers, we are not. We are still offering this throughout the COVID uh, craziness. And again, no private mortgage insurance on that. And that is a 30 year fixed. And if people were locking that in today, the rate would be 3% with no points. Um, amazing rates, 30-year uh, fixed again. Okay, next, please. Um, this is just a quick synopsis of our private wealth and physician loan products. We are still offering the physician loan program. Um, again, when other lenders are kind of pulling out of some of those, we are still offering those 100% on primary residence will allow doctors to close um, with just a contract not having started their position. And we also will do similar on a construction loan. Um, those are reduced a little bit in loan to value, but we can do a construction loan uh, to 95% um, in many cases and be just fine on jumbo. And that leads into the construction perm, perfect timing. Um, we're doing a lot of construction perm. Um, builders have been real excited that we're still in that market. Uh, they like how our system works. We use some really uh, interesting tools built and a number of other things that help the clients be uh, integrated in with that process and also offering that 30 year fixed locked in day one. So your high net worth clients are very excited about that. Uh, we don't foresee rates going any lower, but of course, we've all said that for the past you know, 10 years, and then they just keep coming down more and more and more. But at this point, um, they're excited to lock in up front and not have to worry about what that rate's going to be at construction uh, and loan. There is no second closing. One closing modifies at completion to principal and interest at that same rate.
And on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have our amazing affordable mortgage program that's called AMP. Um, that is our version um, of a CRA type transaction. We will do 100% financing with no mortgage insurance. That's really the key. Clients aren't paying that additional premium in MI, so it allows them to be able to qualify for more home than what they could if they had to have mortgage insurance. I have to say here, this is an awesome product. I did use this for my son and he was able to purchase in Northport um, at a higher price point than he would have had he gone to FHA and had the MI. So great program seller contribution of 6%. If the seller pays closing costs, we only need to verify $500 from um, the borrowers. So amazing product. We're doing a lot of that as well. So both ends of the spectrum there. Awesome. And uh, I can just professionally say, if, if any of you have not worked with the, the Synovus team, that they just do an incredible job and, and their programs are, are really great. Um, so with that, we'll uh, kind of jump into the flood insurance part of things and kind of get going from there. Um, I think all of you are muted now. I'm going to go ahead and just try to open it up so that it's a little interactive as these maps can get complicated. So if there are uh, questions along the way, you know, if it's very, very like specific to a specific property, I would ask that we talk about that at the end. But if it's like, hey, can, you know, can we go back and just look at that slide one more time? Um, I'm definitely wide open for that on there. So um, I should be, so you should be getting a allowed to talk um, in case you do want to uh, ask any questions along the way. Um, so with that being said, um, like I said, my name is uh, Jay Colehouse. Um, I am the uh, president of a company called HH Insurance Group. Um, I have a bachelor's and master's degree in uh, risk management and insurance from Florida State, as well as what's called the CPCU or Chartered Property and Casualty Underwriter designation, um, which is the highest designation within the insurance industry. Our office is really, uh, you know, prides ourselves on being experts within the flood insurance field. And um, one of the big things that's happening in flood insurance is if we rewind back to bigger waters. So if you remember bigger waters, that's when flood insurance rates went from like um, $2,000 to $20,000 overnight. Um, part of the Bigger Waters Act was to do a coastal flood insurance rate study on maps. And do the, does the risk that's being charged from a premium standpoint, do they match the, the rate maps that are being applied? The good news out of doing that is, um, wow, Sarasota County did amazing. I, I will say um, out of really all of the counties on the west coast of Florida, at this point, I have not seen a county have as positive of an impact as Sarasota County from base flood elevations just dropping across the board and a lot of things going from velocity flood zones down to uh, A zones. And so uh, for an, anybody that's doing anything, you know, high flood zone type areas, uh, the, this is really good news for, for pretty much all of Sarasota County. Um, as we talk, you're gonna hear uh, quite a few words get said. And so, you know, just to kind of give you a little historical context in terms of what some of them mean. When you hear the word A or B zone, it can end in AE, it can end in BE, it can end in A10, it can end in A, a whatever. Any, anytime it starts with an A or starts with a V, uh, um, that means that it is mandatory purchase flood insurance. So if you have a mortgage on the home, you're required to have flood insurance on that. If you hear it say B, C, or X, that means it's non-mandatory. So while we highly recommend flood insurance, it means that a lender does not require to, uh, you to carry flood insurance on the house. Um, the next one that you're gonna hear word-wise is what's called a coastal A zone. So um, the coastal A zone um, is basically, it's where FEMA has split the zones between um, where they traditionally had just an A or a V, they use this coastal A zone, which means from a construction standpoint, it has to be built like a V zone, but from a flood insurance standpoint, it has to be rated as an A zone. So what happens in those cases is if you've dealt with many, um, many uh, V zones, you'll see that V zones typically have a flood insurance rate in the five to $6,000 neighborhood, even if they're elevated. And when that happens, basically, 
the um, the rates are very advantageous um, to go to this coastal A zone because homes are coming from a V zone into a coastal A zone. And so now the affordability from a flood insurance standpoint it, it is definitely there. And then we have this, uh, we still have the V zone. Um, you know, most V zones are called VE. If you want an easy way to remember that, just think very expensive equals VE. And so um, V zones typically, you know, flood insurance starts around $5,000. Now, one of the great things about flood insurance and FEMA flood rating is what's called historical rating or grandfather. So historical rating allows that any house that's in Sarasota County that's built 1975 or newer, if the house was built in compliance at the time of construction, um, so basically the base flood elevation at that point was 10 feet and the house was built to 10 feet, um, if they're adversely affected by these flood map changes, it does not count against them because they get to go back and use the historical rating. So we have done quite a few um, Gulf front homes where they were built as an A zone and they're now a B zone. So as a V zone, they would be like a $6,000 flood rate. We can go back and rate them as an A zone to like a $500 flood rate. And that, that happens today. But just as you watch the presentation, if you see a property where you're like, man, this is going to be adversely affected. This is not a great thing from a flood standpoint. Um, just keep in mind that we can go back and use that original rating and it really helps people from a rate standpoint. So um, basically this is kind of an overview of the area that we're gonna cover today. So we're basically just working our way from kind of the north part of the county down into the central part of the county. And then um, if you don't get too bored hearing that part of the presentation, on uh, August 17th, we are going to do basically uh, from the, the central part of Sarasota County down to uh, the southern end of Sarasota County. So we do have another uh, uh, presentation scheduled um, and we'll basically be working through that. And so, but at this point for today, this is just kind of a, a little overview as to what areas we are going to uh, cover. So as you see these flood maps on your screens, you're gonna see a couple things. You're gonna see these white lines kind of like running through the screen. That is a flood zone. So the white line is a flood zone. So we basically, when we see the white line, we have to kind of follow that back into where, what zone it's actually in. You're gonna see a blue area and that is an A or a V zone. So if the area is kind of shaded in blue, that means that it is in a mandatory purchase flood zone. And then we just have to read the zone to see whether it's in an A or a V. You're going to see an orange area, which is going to be a B, C, or an X zone. And so that's, again, that's the non-mandatory purchase areas. One of the things that's going to be really weird on this is you're going to see certain areas that are um, orange and they're X zones, even though they're waterfront homes. So the reason that that happens is the definition of an X zone. So an X zone is defined by the lowest adjacent grade. So think of the lowest adjacent grade being the lowest area of land immediately next to the house being higher than FEMA's target base flood elevation. And so um, when the base flood elevation in some of these cases drops like three feet, the lowest adjacent grade is now high enough to push the house out of a flood zone if the house was built with fill being brought in or anything like that. So you will see a couple of those. And then you're going to see this black line with triangles. So that's the coastal A zone line. So from a, well, what side of it do you want to be on? The bottom part of the triangle is the better side of it. So you want the tip of the triangle not pointing towards your house. If the tip of the triangle is pointing towards your house, that does mean that you're in a coastal A zone. Now, again, coastal A zone is good in terms of it means that you are paying an A zone flood rate, but you would just have to build from a new construction standpoint like a V zone. So with that being said, we're going to kind of start at the uh, Manatee Sarasota County line and work our way down. So we'll, we'll start with Longboat Key. Um, so the map on the left, that is our current flood map. So that's basically the map that is used right now from a construction standpoint. The map on the right, that is the new flood insurance map. So that's what is being proposed by FEMA to take effect for Sarasota County. 
So from a timing standpoint, um, just to kind of give you a heads up as to like, well, when, when can I expect this? Uh, we are probably about one year away at this point. So it was expected a little earlier. COVID did kind of slow that down from just a municipality standpoint. So I would expect in the next year that these maps take effect. So as we look at the map on the left side and we compare it to the map on the right side, the big thing that jumps out there is you see on the left side that it is in an AE flood zone and the base flood elevation is 10 feet. So that means that basically uh, from a flood insurance standpoint to be in a compliance of, of rating, you, your house has to be at 10 feet. On the right side, we see that that number really drops down for the majority of that area to an AE eight foot base flood elevation. So that means that base flood elevation is dropping two feet, which is very favorable from a rate standpoint for anybody that owns a house in, in that area. As we continue to work our way down Longboat Key and start to see other areas, we see the same thing, except now we see there's a couple areas that are currently um, AE 11. And so that means that it's an A zone with an 11 foot base flood elevation. And that flood zone in many cases is dropping down to an eight foot. So it's about a three foot drop there. Now you then also see um, a little bit out to the right side of the screen is you're going to see that there are some waterfront homes there on Fair Oaks Lane and Fair Oaks Place where the uh, color actually changes to form. So those are homes where they were probably built with a lot of fill. And now that the base flood elevation is dropping from 11 feet, to eight feet, the fill is high enough to actually remove those homes from the, from a flood zone. So those properties, while we'd highly recommend that they carry flood insurance, technically from a mortgage standpoint, are now no longer in a flood zone. So that's very favorable from a rating standpoint on the homes. Um, as we continue to work our way down, you're gonna kind of hear me get a little repetitive in terms of it's gonna sound like, man, this, this all sounds the same in terms of we have 10 foot base flood elevation dropping to eight foot elevation. Now, the other thing that we see is on the left hand side, we see a lot of V zones, typically for condo towers that are in V zones, and those are going to A zones. That is a really big deal. So, zone again is the highest rate from a flood standpoint. A zone is the lower rate, but still in a flood zone. So when we look at it from the standpoint as to what the HOA might pay from a master policy standpoint, using NFIP based rates, a condo master policy, uh, we just saw one that was $74,588 per year. Now when that goes to an A zone, that's gonna drop that rate for the same HOA um, it, down to $9,862 per year. So if we just figure that it's a 20 unit HOA in there, um, the current cost per unit, just dividing it across the units is $3,729 annually in flood insurance or approximately $300 a month in HOA dues. On the new flood maps, if you took that same condo association, it's now 493 per unit on an annual basis um, or like $45 per month on an HOA basis. Um, so with that, I would kind of ask Laura, you know, Laura, what, what does that do from a purchasing power standpoint when you see that drop of about $300 a month? Um, so I was doing the math on that and $200 gets you about 50,000. So 300 would it give you an, about an additional 75,000 that they could qualify for with that savings. Awesome. So that's just directly, you know, from a debt to income standpoint by the HOA fees dropping, you're going to see these massive changes come to affordability or just that mental mindset to some people that just are, hey, I don't want to be in a condo that pays $300 a month just in flood insurance, but I don't mind being in a condo that pays $40 a month in flood insurance. And so I think you're going to see uh, a mental mindset change as well as an affordability standpoint on some of these condos. Um, so as we continue to work our way down, you're continuing to really see that, that recurring theme. So you're seeing that theme of we've got areas that are currently 10 and 11 foot base flood elevations drop to eight and nine foot base flood elevations. Um, and so again, it's just a really great thing from, from my standpoint as to flood insurance rates. And you see some X zones pop in there. 
Now, one thing that I will advise you in terms of considering some of these X zones, if the X zone is on um, like 90% of the house, but there's still 10% of the home that's in an A zone, it does still require to carry flood insurance. However, that flood rate is dropping by 50 to 60% by, by that happening. And so um, it, it is a really great thing in terms of what, what just happens from overall rate affordability. Um, so as we continue to come down, um, again, you're seeing that recurring theme. Map on the left side, the current flood map shows things in a 10 foot base flood elevation. Map on the right side shows it in an eight foot base flood elevation. Now here's where it gets even, even cooler purely from a flood standpoint is if you look on that kind of bottom right corner, you're seeing AE seven foot. And so what that means is basically the base flood elevation for those homes is dropping um, by three feet. Now, most homes in this area are newer construction, but I just want to kind of throw it out there for some of these areas that maybe are slab on grade type construction. FEMA rounds, and so if you have that ranch style home and it's at six and a half feet, that rounds up to a seven. And so in those cases, that would drop their flood rate typically from like 3,400 right now down to like 13 and 1,400. And so uh, as, as we work our way through Longboat Key, you're just going to hear massive flood rate decreases across that area. Um, so as we continue to go, as we continue to go uh, down, you're seeing the AE 10-foot uh, base flood elevation on the left side and AE 11-foot base flood elevations on the left side drop down into that 8-foot range as we kind of just continue to work our way down through this map. Um, so this is that non-elevated home example. So this is purely using FEMA rates. This doesn't consider private market flood insurance or anything along those lines. But using the FEMA flood rates, what you're looking at is if a house is currently at six and a half feet and now base flood elevation drops to seven feet, the premium rate goes from 3,300 right now in NFIP down to $1,380 in NFIP. So again, Laura, I would ask you, you know, what's that $2,000 per year difference do from a, from a debt to income standpoint? Are you there, Laura? All right, she might have had to jump off, but um, you know. Oh, I, sorry, I, I didn't. I didn't unmute. Um, same kind of thing. If you if you divide that out to a monthly figure, you're talking about another, you know, fifty thousand to seventy five thousand, depending on what that ends up as a monthly calculation. Awesome. Um, and so we'll continue kind of coming down. Um, and uh, you know, again, we're seeing where we see on the left side AE eleven foot base flood elevation through this area dropping to sevens and eights. Now, the one thing that we do start to pay attention to as we kind of continue to work our way down um, the maps a little bit is we are starting to see on the right-hand side that coastal A zone line starting. So where that falls is kind of like on the tips of those fingers, um, if you're looking out there, they are showing that they do have a partial coastal A zone running through them. So if it's a current homeowner that lives there, it's, it's kind of interesting your flood rate's gonna drop 50% in terms of you're going from a, um, you know, really right now an 11 foot base flood elevation down to an eight foot base flood elevation, um, or I'm sorry, a seven foot base flood elevation. Uh, but the only thing to be aware of is if it's a new construction build, we now have to build to V-zone specs. And so what that means is that basically we have to do the deep pilings and the breakaway walls in there. So flood rates are coming down. However, the, the specs of construction do go up. And again, it's just a couple select homes in there. For the most part, most of those homes are, uh, are just gonna see very positive results on this. Um, so, you know, as we keep coming down the maps, we're seeing left side 11 foot base flood elevation, right side nine and 10 foot base flood elevation. So just very, very positive. And we'll keep coming. Again, same thing. We see V zones dropping to A zones or A zone A11s on the left side coming to um, A8s on the right side. So we're kind of coming down to the, um, the end of Longboat Key here. And again, we see kind of those uh, homes at the end there where they're currently in a 10 foot base flood elevation dropping into X zones for the most part. 
And again, the reason for that is a lot of those homes were built with fill. And so when the base flood elevation drops the two feet that it's dropping, that fill makes the house high enough to where it technically qualifies as an A or as an X zone, meaning non-mandatory purchase flood insurance. As an insurance agent, we highly recommend that it's carried, but it's not necessarily required. Um, so we'll continue to, to work our way down. We're continuing to hear this recurring theme out there. Of, you know, on the left side, we're seeing base flood elevation of 10 and 11 feet. On the right side, we're seeing it drop down into the seven foot range. Now, one other thing that's not um, always talked about on there is that the base flood elevation also determines how high you have to build from a new construction standpoint. So in an 11 foot base flood elevation, uh, typically in this area, Sarasota County requires a two foot freeboard for new construction. So meaning you have to build two feet above that. And so that would mean on a new build right now, your first finished floor has to be at 13 feet. On the seven foot, that finished floor has to be at nine feet. And so what that means is now you've got, you know, where right now a lot of times you have to do the garage downstairs and then the first living floor on the second floor. Now you've got the availability to where that can come in at the uh, first living floor, almost in a you know, elevated ranch style home because of these decreases. And again, you're seeing when you see the seven foot base flood elevation, if it is an older ranch style home right now, you are seeing the availability of now a six and a half foot uh, home from a top of bottom floor standpoint rounds up into making that FEMA compliant from a rating standpoint. So as we work our way down, um, we continue to see the same thing. So again, left side, we're seeing everything there is really um, 12, 11, and 10 foot base flood elevations. On the right side, we're seeing seven and eight foot base flood elevations. And so just really, really huge wins from a rating standpoint, as well as from a um, just new construction standpoint, and just kind of across the board, just, just nice wins on there. So one of the things that we've really talked about a lot about are the ranch style homes, but you know, let's just say that it's a current home and it's built in 2005 and it's built to the base flood elevation level of 10 feet. Right now, that home would have a flood insurance rate um, using just NFIP standardized rates at $1,444 per year. On the new base flood elevation and the new maps, they would have a flood rate at $422 per year. And so basically that home is seeing about a thousand dollar per year decrease from a flood rate standpoint. So, well, you know, debt to income might not be an issue for a lot of those homeowners. You know, they are seeing that thousand dollars a year come off of there, uh, which is going to definitely help them there. But also it just makes it feel like, man, flood insurance isn't a burden as much anymore. You know, it's going from over a hundred dollars a month to under $40 a month from an escrowing standpoint. So as we continue to work our way down, um, one of the things that I do throw in there is now we start to see where we've got more V zones on the left side. So where we've got things that are currently in V zones moving to A zones. And that's a great thing from a rate standpoint. That's where, you know, for a primary homeowner, we see those rates go from $5,000 to $500 from a flooding standpoint. And for the condo associations, we also see the big drops. Now, with that being said, we do see that coastal A zone kicking in there. So that's that map, or that's the line with the black triangles on there. And that's kicking in there for a lot of these areas that are currently in V zones are kicking into coastal A zones. Again, in our opinion, that's a really, really big win. And the reason it's a win is because the rate is coming down so far. It just means that it has to be built from a new construction standpoint really to the same standard that it would have to be built to today, except now they just don't have to pay such a high flood insurance rate. So as we jump into kind of the bird key area, this one gets pretty crazy as well from a rate standpoint. You know, bird key is a lot of 11, 12, and 13 foot base flood elevations and some that are in velocity flood zones right now. What we see through Bird Key is we see that it is going to seven foot base flood elevation. And so it's pushing a lot of those non waterfront homes into X zones there. Now, again, highly recommend they carry flood insurance, but you do have a lot of homes there that are even ranch style homes where their flood insurance right now is $3,000 per year. And now they're coming down into, uh, you know, flood rates around, uh, well, they'd be 
$500 as an X-Zone rate, but when Laura looks at it from an escrowing standpoint, she doesn't have to charge the borrower escrows on that. And so it really helps from a, from a qualification standpoint to drop that $3,000 per year expense out of there. So we continue to work our way down. We continue to see very similar results. And so really overall, just huge win through here. Um, and, and, and just, like I said, just huge rate decrease is coming for these areas. Um, so now we're gonna kind of start working our way like through uh, Sarasota uh, Bay area and just kind of work our way down. Um, again, left side, we're seeing in a lot of those areas where we've got a base flood elevation at 11 feet and we've got flood zones that run very, very far. So they, they really come in a couple blocks from from the house. What we see on the right side is base flood elevation dropping from 11 feet to eight feet, but it does kick into a coastal, coastal uh, A zone. Um, but then on, as we kind of continue to work our way a little bit more mainland, we're seeing that it goes from an, a current A zone into an X zone. And so that again means non-required flood insurance. We highly recommend they carry it, but they're not required to from Laura's standpoint. Um, so we continue to work our way through and we see, again, just huge improvements from base flood elevations. We see areas that are currently sitting at a 12 dropping to an eight foot base flood elevation. We see areas that are currently in, a, in an 11 dropping to a seven foot base flood elevation. And so that will have a direct correspondence on the flood rates. Um, we do see a couple of the areas that are maintaining that coastal A zone, but right now they're in V zones. And so they're going from a V zone down to an AE eight foot base flood elevation. And so what that means to them from a rate standpoint is they're going from 5,000 to 500. And yes, they have to maintain that same construction, you know, uh, increased cost on there, but their flood rate is just coming down drastically. Um, so we continue to work our way through this and we continue to see similar results. So left side, you can see that we've got homes that are sitting there in a VE that are moving to an AE. Um, couple that do stay VE, but for the most part, like 95% of the, the homes there do move into an AE and the base flood is dropping down into the seven foot range. And you also see that as we get further inland on there, we go on the left side, what would, tip, what would today be a mandatory purchase A zone moving into an X zone. So, um, and three foot base flood elevation decreases. So we continue to work our way down. We continue to sit, see and say similar results. So I don't wanna bore you with saying the same thing, uh, but again, just overall very, very positive news, very, very good uh, results coming um, for these areas from a flooding standpoint. Um, so really same, same thing, except here now we actually have five foot decreases of base flood elevation. So we have areas that right now are sitting as an AE12 dropping down into an AE7. And so again, um, one of the big things that I would encourage you to think about if you're looking at homes in these areas, you're taking listings in these areas, anything along those lines, one of the things that I'd really encourage you to think about is even if it's a 1960s slab on grade style home that you have, get an elevation certificate. It can only help you from a flood rating standpoint. And we can look at it and say, hey, yes, the flood right now is $3,000, but we know it's dropping down into the potentially $500 type range. And we would know that via the elevation certificate because we are seeing such drastic changes coming. Um, and so continue to work our way down continue to really see that same recurring theme of, of A zones going to um, you know, uh, lower base flood elevations. Now, um, there is a slight area in here. Um, a couple of the homes, like one or two, do move from an A zone right now into a V zone, but again, it's like one or two, and we can kind of specifically touch on, on which one or two uh, um, on a one-off basis. Uh, but for the most part, as we look at it, we are seeing uh, base flood elevations at 11, dropping down to sevens, and we are seeing them go uh, just really overall positive, positive results. And a lot of them are going from V zones down into A zones. So as we continue to work our way down, um, again, that same recurring theme where we're seeing the zones on here go AE11 to AE7. Um, 
sevens and eights. And so just really positive results that, that we see as we work our way down the, these flood zones. And as we see on the left side, a lot of V zones and a lot of V zones that remain through a lot of those uh, homes that turn into A zones. And so from a rating standpoint, it just makes an, an incredible difference. And, it, and that really just will drive down flood rates drastically compared to where they've ever been. So, you know, if we're talking an elevated a, uh, V zone, one of the things to keep in mind is that FEMA rates V zones based on the total cost of construction. Now, often we can get private market flood rates significantly less for V zones. So, you know, but just again, we just kind of purely based this based on the National Flood Insurance Program. And so if we look at the NFIP based rates for an elevated V zone that's worth about a million five in rebuild costs, it comes in at a premium rate around $12,188. On this flood map change, that makes uh, that same house have a premium rate at $450. So on a Gulf front home, it probably won't make, you know, might not be a debt to income type issue that somebody has, but you know, Laura, what, what, what does, thousand dollars a month do from a debt to income ratio if, if you have one of those. Are you there, Laura? Sorry, sorry, Jake. Um, I was on a text call with a customer. Um, the uh, you're looking at then about two hundred thousand. So and a thousand dollars a month is enormous in what they're going to qualify for. So that, that's a massive difference. I mean, you know, on a $2 million home, that's a 10% value change in there just based on flood insurance rates as to who now qualifies to be able to make that purchase. And so um, I think that there's, there's a huge change coming from, from a, you know, flood zone standpoint that, that does come on as these maps uh, start rolling out. So and let me add to that, Jake, I think what we had talked about before, if, um, the agents that have listings would like us to do sort of a preliminary quote. We're happy to do that. So that information is readily available on the, the listing itself, or at least the figure is available uh, during that period of time. Absolutely. And so uh, it, we've got a, uh, basically a program that we internally use that allows us to be able to give you a report that shows you like current flood zone versus preliminary flood zone. And so if, as you're taking listings in any of these areas, or you've got buyers interested in any of these areas, it's a great solution for you to be able to look at it and have somebody see it from a perspective rating standpoint as to what they think they're looking at flood insurance rate wise. Um, and so, you know, as we continue to work down these maps, we really hear that same recurring theme of base flood elevations dropping. Now in this area particularly, it's only about a one or a two foot drop. So it doesn't have quite the same effect, but it does still have a big effect um, from, from a rating standpoint and from, you know, really what, what we're looking at. I mean, even a foot makes about a 40% difference um, on flood rates. So the, that was a perfect, uh, perfect ask on, on Laura's part in terms of, well, how do I look at this? And, you know, how, how do I really figure this out and, and see what it looks like? So um, in partnership with Synovus, um, what we have is we have a program that actually gives you a report that looks like this. And so it shows you a, an effective flood zone, in this case, of um, 11 feet, dropping down to an effective flood zone at 7 feet. So it shows that four-foot drop that you would be able to show somebody on a listing basis or on a buyer's basis. If you want any of these reports, uh, we're happy to do them for you. It is about, a, you know, at most 24 hour turnaround time. Often it comes back in about, you know, 30 to 45 minutes. It just kind of depends on whether it's a manual determination or not. Um, and so if you have any of those, if you email Laura the address and the information on it, uh, she can get the report to you. And if you also have the elevation certificate, that's the biggest help because then in this case, let's just say that this house is built at that 11 foot base flood elevation. Right now it's a uh, $1,400 flood rate. On the new map, it's a $400 flood rate. And we, we'd be happy to pull any of those reports for you. But especially for some of these homes that are going to be on the fringe of, um, of being able to qualify between an A zone and an X zone, we, we can easily make that determination for you what it looks like on the future flood maps good or bad, you know, 99% of the county is good. There is that 1% that's not good. And so we can also run those reports for you. 
Um, and so that really kind of concludes our presentation. Um, anybody that joined us throughout it, I just unmuted you. Um, and so any questions, uh, Laura and myself are available to, uh, to go through with you. Um, Alexis Kim has the question. Actually, it looks like you posted too. So can we share Laura's contact information? Um, absolutely. Uh, Laura, do you want to give out your uh, phone number and email address? You bet. My email address is my name, Laura Dorsey, L-A-U-R-A-D-O-R-S-E-Y at synovus.com, S-Y-N-O-V-U-S.com. And my cell number is 941 468 2943. And also, I, I'll add in here too um, on the clients that I'm doing uh, mortgages for, I do send them all to uh, Jake for a courtesy quote just because the detail that they go into when they're doing a quote is amazing. And the client has a true understanding of what they're getting, what's covered, what's not. Just seeing one of his quotes is awesome. And 99.9% .9 of the time, those clients opt to use them just not only because of the great rates and, and premiums, but because of the length of detail that those reports go into. They just don't throw out a binder and say, hey, here's your coverage and the people don't understand what they have. They take the time to do a lengthy report with every quote, even as busy as they are. I get that with every, for every client, I do a courtesy quote with them. Awesome. Well, we appreciate it. And then um, looks like Alexis and Susan both asked, can we share the slide? Absolutely. So um, I believe uh, Razum actually recorded the meeting. And so uh, it's going to be posted on the website so, so you can rewatch it. Um, and if any of you want to email me, um, so the, the best email address is sales at hhinsgroup.com. We'd be happy to uh, be able to um, email you a copy of the uh, presentation. And then also uh, Razum's going to send out a copy of the presentation on a recorded basis for everybody to be able to see. Jake, can I also add that if they feel that it would be helpful to have this in their individual offices, this was pretty darn simple to do. We'd be happy to do it again um, at an office meeting with entire staff, teams, whatever we can do to try to help get this word out, we will be happy to do it. Absolutely. And, and if it's on an office type basis, if there's, hey, we really want to focus on like these specific areas in more or less detail, we're happy to do that as well. You know, today was kind of a, a pretty big broad brush. You know, we, we didn't really spend like five minutes per slide going through because we wanted to cover a lot of area. But if there's certain areas that, that your office is specialized in or anything like that, we'd be happy to, to really deep dive into those specific areas for you. Cool. Well, seeing no additional questions coming across on the chat, um, I'll go ahead and uh, kind of wrap up the meeting. Um, and if anybody needs anything uh, from Laura or I, definitely just reach out to us and uh, we'd be happy to help you with it. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.